Have you heard about the Ware Alligator? This is Library Director Heidi Reed, and I'd like to tell you the story. Most of my information comes from a radio program written by George W. Dillon titled The Ware Alligator, which was broadcast on the Ware Knitters radio program on WARE in 1953, with some pictures from the library's collection. The story goes like this. In 1922, a man whose name has been forgotten was driving a bakery wagon back to Gilbertville after selling baked goods in Ware. There was an area by the Ware River that was known as the Dismal Swamp, near a car barn for the trolley line. As he was driving along, the man saw what he assumed was a log across the road. When he jumped down to pull it away, it began to move on its own, on short legs with ugly claws. The man yelled in fright, which scared his horse, who ran home to Gilbertville by himself. The man ran back in the direction of Ware. When he got back to Ware, the man told the first group of people he saw about the alligator. First they thought he was a drunk, but when he convinced them he wasn't, they were curious. They went back to the swamp, but it was almost dark and nothing was seen. The story spread, and after a few days, two employees of the trolley line were sure they saw the alligator. After that, people swarmed the swamp, hunting for the alligator. The story got into the press and people from all over New England came to see if they could see it. Local children sold hot dogs and peanuts and the story went around that the alligator had escaped from a circus. Bernie Satz, who is the manager of the Casino Theater, which is seen here in a picture that's even earlier than our story, was one of the most enthusiastic alligator hunters. He thought if he could catch it, it would be a great draw to the theater. Soon a long box with holes was delivered to the theater. The next day he announced that he and his brother had captured the alligator and it would be on display in the theater. Crowds came to find a four-foot alligator swimming in an old tin bathtub. People doubted it was the alligator from the swamp, but Mr. Satz offered $100 to anyone who could prove it wasn't and never had to pay out, as no one could prove it one way or the other. Flynn Person had a drugstore on Main Street. He enlisted Walter Eddy to help him create a postcard with an alligator floating in the river. This is what the postcard looked like. This is proof that even in the days before Photoshop, you could alter a photograph to show whatever you want it to show. After the alligator frenzy died down, Mr. Satz didn't want to feed the alligator anymore, so he gave it to Lionel Greasy of Upper Church Street. Mr. Greasy let the alligator run loose on his farm. At a fair in town later that summer, the alligator was a great hit at 10 cents a person to look at the box and see him. When the cold weather came, Mr. Greasy bedded the alligator down in his silo and covered him in chopped corn stalks, but by spring it was dead. However, the alligator still lived on in Ware in a few ways. Mike Houlihan opened a lunch counter called the Alligator Diner, which was immortalized by, in a painting by Elizabeth Lincoln. The diner was on Main Street next to the a and &P and was there for many years. Starting in 1928, the Ware High School named their monthly magazine, The Alligator, and had several editions with that name. And finally, as Mr. Dillon says, there was a snappy local baseball team, a semi-pro team called The Alligators. They played in a local league and did pretty well. I don't have any dates for these articles uh, as whoever kept this scrapbook didn't date them, but as you can see, they won pretty regularly. So that's the story of the Ware Alligator. Once the library opens again, if you'd like to come in and see any of these pictures or other things, we'd be glad to show them. Thank you for listening.